Today we've got a complete beginner's guide of the Samsung Galaxy S23. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up your new device, and then dive into some tips, tricks, and hidden features allowing you to leave this video as a Samsung Galaxy S23 expert. Let's get started. So this is what the front of the box looks like. It has the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra on it, and on the back some text, and on the side it says Samsung. And there we have it, the brand new Samsung Galaxy. It has a nice little pull tab right here. And the foam lifts up. Inside the box here, we've got all of our materials. The quick start guide, terms and conditions, the SIM removal, and the charging cable. And we can pull off the nice little protective pill. And we've got the phone. Before we get started, let's take a look at some of the buttons around the phone. On the left side, there are no buttons, just a clean slate. And then on the right side, we got the power button, the volume up button, and the volume down button. Then on the back, we've got the cameras. And on the bottom, we've got the S Pin the speakers, the charging cable, and the SIM tray. Let's go ahead and power this device on for the first time and set it up. So to do that, our power button is right here on the right side. You just press and hold that button. Samsung Galaxy. So you press and hold until you see the Samsung button and it boots right up. So here we have the welcome screen where we select our language. You can hit the drop down and select whatever language you prefer and then hit the start button to get started. Before we get started, you can take out the SIM eject tool here and insert it into the bottom of the phone and out pops the SIM card tray. If you're transferring from another phone, you'll go ahead and pop your SIM card right into this slot. So I can go ahead and do that. Pop in my SIM card and slide it right in. And that's how you set up your phone if you're transferring from a new device. So you will have to restart and switch here to get started. Your device will restart to configure features supported by the new SIM card. So I can set up using another device if I'm coming from a Galaxy or an Android device or an iPhone or iPad. I want to hit the skip and set this up as a brand new phone. But if you do have an older iPhone or an older Galaxy device, you can press one of these buttons depending on which one you have and it will copy all of the settings and accounts from that old device and put it on this new Galaxy device for you. So it helps out and saves a lot of time during the setup process if you have an older phone. I'm going to go ahead and hit skip. So the first thing we'll need to do here is set up our Wi-Fi network. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll tap on the Wi-Fi name and enter the password. All right, so I'll go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi network, just like that. Now that I'm connected, it's getting phone ready. So it says this may take a few minutes, so it's okay. It's processing, it's loading, it's getting the phone ready. And then in a few minutes, it'll give you your next step. Copy apps and data. You can choose to transfer your apps, photos, contacts, Google account, and more. So we don't have another device to copy apps and data from, so we're gonna say don't copy. So now it asks me to sign into my Google account. I'll go ahead and type in my email address and set that up. Okay, now that I've entered my username and password for my Google account, I can go ahead and agree to the terms of service with Google and get that account set up on my new Samsung Galaxy S23. So if you wanna back up your device, you can use the basic device backup with Google services, and that will automatically back up your apps, your app data, call history, contacts, device settings, passwords, permissions, and SMS and MMS messages to the Google servers. So I'll leave that on, I'll let it automatically back up. We've got location settings on. This allows apps and services to know what location I'm currently at 
and Google may collect that data and use it in an anonymous way. It allows for scanning, so allow apps and services to scan the Wi-Fi networks nearby and even when Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is off, so I'll keep that on. And then we've got device maintenance, so send usage and diagnostics data and install updates in apps. I'll go ahead and keep that on. That way the developers get the um, you know, diagnostic data to help improve the device over time. So we'll go ahead and accept all of these selections. And now it asks to protect your phone. There are multiple ways to protect your phone and prevent others from getting access. You can use face recognition, fingerprint, a PIN number, password, or pattern. And I'm going to set up a pin here just to make it super simple. And then um, later we'll check out the other ways to secure the phone. So remember this pin. If you forget it, you'll need to reset your phone and all your data will be erased. So a six digit pin is recommended. And I'll go ahead and type in my pin. We'll be right back. Okay, I've typed in my pin and it wants me to type it in again. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I've entered my PIN and then I'll hit OK. So getting your phone ready, this may take a few moments. So now if you have a Samsung account, you can sign in here and enter your email or phone number and connect your Samsung account to your device. A Samsung account lets you find your lost phone even when it's offline, sync your apps and settings across your devices, and share files with family, friends, and other devices. Now it asks for Samsung services. Continuity service enables other Samsung devices to be able to detect things on your phone. So if you want to like copy and paste, for example, from device to device, you'll want to enable the continuity service. Customization service gives you customized stickers, search results, routines, and more, allowing the Samsung apps to interact with your various apps on the phone. Nearby device scanning helps you connect to nearby wearables, Devices, mobile accessories, and smart home devices when they're detected nearby, that's super cool. It makes things really easy to set up if you're gonna set up a new device and it can detect it rather than you having to scan a QR code or um, connect through Bluetooth. So I highly recommend you leave that feature on. Smart suggestions, this suggests useful actions such as calendar events, messages to send based off how you use your phone. So it remembers, you know, how you're using your phone and then recommends a suggestion based off the routine actions that you have. So I'll go to agree and enable all of these Samsung services. And now it asks me to choose your display preference. So you can have it in light mode, which keeps everything bright and light and um, you know popping. And then you can have dark mode, which keeps everything a bit lower dark. Um, I prefer dark mode. You can see the difference there when you tap on it, it kind of, um, you know, makes everything black and dark, and then you can go back to light mode and everything's bright and light. So I love dark mode. Um, I'll select that for my display preference, and then we'll hit next. And now we're all set up. So just like that, I was able to set up my new Samsung Galaxy S23. Just took a few minutes to set up and press all the buttons and type in all the passwords. But now I can explore my Galaxy and some tips pop up and I can check out my brand new device here. And now that we're all set up, we can hit the finish button and it'll take us to our home screen. So the first thing you want to do now that you've got your Galaxy S23 set up is head over to the Play Store and update all of the applications that are on your phone. You can hit your name in the top right there, the little icon that has your first name letter, and then go to Manage Apps and Devices. And then you'll see updates available. 19 updates are pending. So we'll want to update all of our software to make sure that we're on the latest and greatest software when we're using our phone. So we'll just tap the update all button and then all of these apps will begin to install and be updated to their latest version. In order to wake our phone, we just press the button on the right side and then we can swipe to unlock. I have a pin set up, so I'll go ahead and enter that pin off camera and then it unlocks the device. What I'm gonna show you today is how to set up the biometrics and additional security measures on your phone. So we set up a pin during login. Let's head over to our settings. There are multiple ways to get to our settings to set up the biometrics. We can swipe up from the bottom of the phone and this opens up all of the apps that we have on our phone. And we can swipe over and we can see there's a second page with the settings application. And I can tap on it and get to settings. Now, if I want to go back to the home screen, I can just press this button right here in the middle and it goes right back to the home screen. 
Another way that we can get to settings is to swipe down from the top, and this opens up the notification center and also your uh, settings at the top right, your control panel. You can press the settings button in the top right up here, and that will take you to settings too. And you can access the control panel no matter what screen you're on. You can just swipe down and hit the, oh, that's the flashlight. We can hit the settings button and go to the settings. Okay, now that we've got our settings open, we can scroll down to security and privacy. And here we can enable additional methods for our biometrics and also the lock screen. So let's start off with the fingerprints. I'll go ahead and enter my current pin off camera. And then it allows me to set up the fingerprints. So I'll hit this continue button right here. And then to get the best scan, press with the pad of your finger inside the circle. So we'll go ahead and hit register and I'll start registering my fingerprint. So here I'm doing my thumb. It says make sure your finger is pressed inside the circle. And here I'll give it multiple reads. Press your finger inside the circle. And here I've successfully added a fingerprint to the phone. Now I can unlock it with my thumb. I'll go ahead and hit done and we'll test it out. So now when we lock the button using the right lock button on the side, and then we tap on the phone, I can use my fingerprint to open it and unlock it. So now I have a pin set up and now I also have my fingerprint set up for maximum security. I can continue to scroll down here and tap on biometrics and set up face recognition. I'll type in my pin off camera and now it's going to allow me to set up face recognition, a convenient way to unlock your phone and verify yourself in apps. I'll hit continue and then it's going to look for my face. So it's registering my face. It asks me to take off my glasses and I'll hit continue and my face was successfully registered. So now when I lock the phone and I open it up, it unlocks just from me looking at it. And that's a very cool feature. So now I've got facial recognition set up, fingerprint set up, and a pen set up. So my phone is now most protected by all three of those options. In order to add apps to your home screen, all you have to do is just swipe up, find an app that you like. Let's say we'll use the settings app again, tap and hold it and drag it to the top and then your home screen will appear and you can select where you want it. We can put it in the top left here. And now I've selected an app from my app library and dragged it onto the home screen and um, I can tap on it to open it up. So that's how we drag and add apps on your home screen. Another cool thing you can do is have multiple home screens. So I can click and drag this to another home screen and it creates a new screen just like that because I dragged it to the edge. I can move this Microsoft folder with it and add that over there. So now I have a home screen on the left and a home screen on the right. Uh, so you can have more than one home screen and designate apps based off the, the type or your favorite collections, um, depending on how you'd like your phone to be that can be on multiple different screens. Next up, I wanna show you how you can modify widgets. If you hold down on your home screen here, you can come in here and select widgets and we can add a battery widget or a Bixby Vision, a calendar, Chrome clock. There's tons of ideas here for widgets that we can add, but let's stick with the battery option. We'll hit add and then we'll hit okay. And now it adds that widget to the home screen. And we can come in here and hold down on that widget and resize it just like that by dragging the little options that are around it. We can scroll back to the first home screen here. You can see that they've got the Google widget. We can also drag the options there to resize that. So Samsung makes it really easy to customize the options that are on your phone and resize them to your personal liking. We can hold down on this and drag it to this front page here, just like that. And then it's a little bit big, so we can probably uh, keep it on the smaller side since we have more than one widget on this screen. And then we can tap on the weather widget that opens up here. Uh, but if we go back to the home screen and hold down on the weather widget, we can resize it just like that. So Samsung makes it really fun to customize the home screen 
and uh, modify the different widgets based off their size and where they are on the home screen. So that's a quick demo of widgets. You can just hold down on your home screen and then tap the widgets button in the bottom to get access to them and then scroll down and all your widgets are right there. Uh, ready to be added to your home screens and of course you can have multiple widgets on multiple home screens and have uh, whichever widgets that fit your your phone's personality best. Another cool feature that Samsung has if you hold down and scroll over to the left you can switch it over to Samsung free and they have different options here for the news feed um, so once you go ahead and select that we can go back to the home screen and free will pop open so stay on top of the latest news. We can go ahead and hit cancel there. Uh, but Samsung Free, it offers different entertainment options. We can hit continue and we'll have to check the terms and conditions in the privacy agreements. Um, so we'll go ahead and agree. And now it shows Samsung Read. Um, so we've got watch, listen, and play. And these are all offerings from Samsung. Uh, so find out first, stay on top of the news by turning on breaking news app notifications. You can always turn them on or off later. We'll go ahead and hit cancel there, but if you want notifications, you can hit turn on. Um, and if you prefer the Google version, you can hold down and go back to Google Discover and uh, then go back to your home screen. So that's Google Discover is more integrated to Google products if you have a Google account. And if you have a Samsung account, your Samsung Free will probably be the better choice for you. So Samsung Free, I'll set that up um, and can read the headlines and check out the entertainment options that they have here on Samsung Free. Let's take a look at the navigation bar at the very bottom. On your Samsung Galaxy S23, when you open an app, if you wanna go home, you just press the button in the middle there. If you wanna look at all the other apps that you have open or recently used, you just tap the left button on the side here and you can navigate between all the different apps that you've recently opened. And if you want to go back, you can hit this button right here. But there's another way on the Samsung Galaxy S23 that you can navigate and use your phone using gestures. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's go to our settings. So I'm going to swipe down from the top and tap on the settings button and then scroll down to display. So display is right here. And then you can scroll down over here to navigation bar and it will provide you with options here so right now the buttons are set up as the primary navigation method but you can switch to the swipe gestures and when we do that you'll notice the navigation bar disappears and now when we use the phone in order to go home we just swipe up and it goes home so with these new navigation controls for swipe gestures you just swipe up to go home and you swipe up to the center to bring up your recently used applications and I can go back. And then in order to go back within an application, you swipe from the edge and you can swipe from any edge here, whether it's the left side or the right side and you swipe into the center and it will go back. So just like that. Now we can demo that again. We can scroll down to display and then scroll down to navigation bar. And if I want to go back, I just swipe to the center of the screen and I can swipe to the center of the screen no matter whether it's on the left or the right edge. And then to go home, we swipe up. And then to get to our, to get to our apps that we recently used, we swipe up and go to the center of the screen. And we can review the recently used applications just like that. So in order to open up our recently used applications, we just swipe up to the center there on our new gesture system. If we want to close one of these applications, all we have to do is just swipe up and it closes the app just like that. And if we want to close all of them to save some memory, we just hit the close all button and it closes all of our recently used applications. So now when we swipe up, no recently used apps are currently open. And if I open up a new app and I swipe up, it's there and I can swipe to close it out. So that's how you close out applications. The next feature I want to talk about is called edge panels, where you can slide your finger from the edge of the screen next to the power button and apps pop up and you can have different options for this in your settings. So if I want to open up the settings app, I can do that. I can swipe up and try the edge panels one more time and press the settings button. And here I can have apps, live messages, people, smart select, tasks, weather, tools, reminder, and clipboard. So whichever one you'd like, you can have selected. So when you swipe from the edge, they pop up. I'm gonna keep it as apps, 
But if I go back to home and I swipe from the power button, the edge of the screen, and onto the screen, the edge panels pop up and these different apps pop up and I can open up the calculator quickly or I can go back and open up free very quickly. So just like that, uh, just edge panels, you swipe from the edge of the screen next to the power button and all the apps pop up, pop open. If you want to modify the apps that are in the panel here, you can press this edit button and then drag in new ones. So we can scroll down, um, we can drag in the Galaxy Store, um, we can take out some just by pressing the minus button on them. If we don't want the Chrome engine or YouTube in there, then we can drag in LinkedIn, drag in the internet browser, and just like that, I've modified uh, some of the apps that are in the panel here. So now, when I swipe open, those apps are there. Those new apps, LinkedIn, internet, are right there in the browser, and I can press the edit button again to um, can press the edit button again to make other modifications as needed. The next thing I want to talk about is the camera. The Samsung Galaxy S23 has a 200 megapixel camera and you can access it just by double pressing the power button and it opens up the camera. You can also access the camera from the lock screen just by sliding over from the bottom right and that opens up the camera. And of course you see once we unlock the device there's a camera icon in the lower right and we can tap on that to open up the camera. So there are multiple ways to get access to the camera, but once you're in, um, you have full access to its beautiful power of 200 raw megapixels to be able to capture things. It's also great in low light photography. And the cameras here are perfect at shooting photography at night. You can switch your different modes right here on the bottom between portrait, photo, video, and more. And they have a ton of modes here for expert raw, pro, pro video, uh, but we'll switch back to photo. Um, and I got a notification coming in there. At the top, we've got our settings that we can access in the camera app. So we can tap on the settings icon and it will bring up different options here that we can modify to make our shots better. And then we've got the flash. We can toggle that to auto or on. We'll go ahead and toggle that off. We've got a timer option. So if we want to uh, have the shutter click at a certain time, we can go ahead and do that. Then we got the uh, ratio here between, you know, three by four, nine by 16. Um, so you can select your different ratios there. And then we've got motion photo on and motion photo off. Motion photo uh, takes a little video of your, your subject once you're taking a shot and includes that in. Um, so you kind of get to see in real time what you actually took a photo of. And then here we've got filters that we can swipe between warm, cool, light, um, and then face filters too. So that's fun to play with. So those are the options there for your camera once you set up your Galaxy S23. When you swipe down to access your notification center and controls here, you can also dig deeper by swiping further down on the controls and get full access to multiple options here between airplane mode, flashlight, mobile hotspot, power saving, all these options here, and then the brightness that we can adjust right here. So it's really cool that you can access all these settings no matter what app you're in. If you're in Google Chrome here, you can just swipe down and then access these quick settings here by swiping down again on the icons. And then you can go back to Google Chrome or open up another app, the camera app, and swipe down and get access to all of these settings just by swiping down. So swiping down from the top and then swiping down further on the uh, control panel icons here opens up an additional settings here. So that's something to check out if you want to modify the settings on your phone quickly without having to dive all the way into the settings app. You can do that right from the top of your phone just by swiping down and swiping down further. Next up, let's review some of our notification settings. If we go scroll down from the top and tap on the settings icon, we'll open up the settings app and right here it says notifications. And we can tap on it and see what our app notifications are. So once we tap on that feature here, we see which apps have access to sending us notifications and which apps do not. And if you don't want an app to send you a notification, you can just swipe it off just like that. And if you do want it, you can swipe it on just like that. 
And this is really helpful if you get a lot of notifications from apps that you don't really want or need and it clutters up your notification feed, then you can come in here and uh, decide which ones deserve to be notifying you on your feed and which ones do not. And I think it's really helpful. You can even tap on an application and go into even deeper detail, whether it appears on the lock screen, whether a badge pops up on the actual app on the home screen, or whether a pop-up appears while you're using your phone. If you don't want it to show up on the lock screen, you just tap it. If you don't want a badge to show up, you just tap that. And if you don't want a pop-up to be allowed, you tap that too. And depending on which app it is, you may want a badge to be shown, but not a pop-up. Um, and you can mix and match based off your preference for that application. I'll go ahead and leave the notifications on for Google so they can send me notifications on the lock screen, the badge, and the pop-up section. Uh, but we can take a look at another app here. If we scroll down, we can see that the Samsung internet is enabled and I can come here and turn off lock screen notifications for that or the badge for that or the pop-up for that. So just like that, by tapping into your notification settings, you can control who sends you notifications, which app sends you notifications, and how they appear on your phone. And it makes it really easy uh, to you know, make it very clean if you have too many notifications popping up on your phone. So that's the app notification section. I highly recommend once you install all your favorite apps to go in and modify and pick which ones deserve to send you notifications and which ones do not. Let's head over to our settings where we can check out our next feature. So to get to the settings, we just swipe down and we tap the settings icon in the top right. And now I wanna take a look at modes and routines. So right here, modes and routines. They've got various different modes here, sleep, theater, driving, exercise, relax, work. And depending on the situation of where I am and what I'm doing, I can enable a mode or have the phone enable the mode and it will help me you know, live better and um, help my phone, you know, set its different settings based off that situation that I'm currently in. So for example, with the sleep mode, it'll help me set the right environment to sleep well and wake up on time. So I can go ahead and set this up. Typically I go to bed around 11, so I can scroll to 11. And then waking up at seven sounds great. And here it says sleep time is eight hours and it selects the days. It's selected every day in the week for this alarm to wake me up. If I don't wanna wake up on Saturday and Sunday, I can go uncheck that just like that. And now it'll only wake me up weekdays, Monday through Friday, and I've got the wake up alarm enabled. And then I can hit next. So now it's asking me if I wanna turn on do not disturb to avoid distractions in this mode. And I can come in here and I can select people that I would like to have access to call me and I can add in contacts there or um, I can select apps that can also notify me while this mode is on. So if I have a very important app that sends me notifications, um, let's, for example, pick YouTube. I always want to be notified when my favorite YouTubers are publishing their videos. So I'll go ahead and pick them there and I can swipe back. And now when Do Not Disturb is enabled, the app notifications for YouTube will come in, but no other app will come in for notifications, only YouTube, because that's the only one that I selected here. And then I can hit next. So choose settings to apply when sleep mode starts. I can turn on grayscale. It looks like that's already on. Dark mode and eye comfort shield. This makes it really easy on your eyes. It uh, helps for blue light when you're looking at your phone. And then we've got sound mode and volume. I can turn it on vibrate. I can say the ring tone can be a certain percentage based off this mode. And then the, the notification, same here. Um, so the volume of these system wide things, I can select between ringtone notifications and system. So. It's cool that I can customize based off each one a unique um, level of volume. So one doesn't, there doesn't have to be one size for all of them. So just like that, we've got ringtone for 33%, the notifications at 60% and the system volume at 46% and done just like that. I can, I can enable a power saving mode and now I have all of these options enabled just like that. So now it asks me how I want this to be turned on. So we can have it turn on automatically, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Or I can come in here um, and modify that sleep schedule and create conditions. And this is where it gets really fancy. If you want to, you can say um, when the Wi-Fi is turned on, 
this turns on or when the Wi-Fi strength is disconnected, four bars or less, three bars or less. So you can come in here and specifically modify based off of which actions happen on your phone or which condition they call it. And then that's when this will turn on. So this mode will be turned on automatically when at least one of the conditions below are met and turned off automatically when none of the conditions are met. So there are plenty of options here for conditions that you can select. So whenever this option is enabled on your phone, the mode will be enabled. And then when that mode um, is disabled, the condition is not met anymore. So I'm gonna turn this condition off because I'm connected to Wi-Fi all night. So I don't want it to um, disconnect when I leave, I want it to be on while I'm on Wi-Fi. So we'll keep it on the time schedule to keep it simple, and then we'll hit done. And all these modes will be enabled to help me sleep better. Um, and that's a really cool setting that you can have enabled. So definitely recommend checking out the modes and routines. Uh, we can come here and minimize distractions in the theater. So this mode can be turned on for a time period, a place, or when an app is open. It's probably best if you select place and then select your local movie theater that you go to. That way, as soon as you get to it, it'll automatically turn on theater mode. But if you have a certain time period where every weekend you go at this certain time, that could be easier too. Or when an app is open, if you have to scan your movie ticket, you can select uh, when that app is open and then it'll turn on this mode for you. We'll go ahead and hit cancel there and swipe back and see what other modes are available. They've got a driving mode, so get ready for driving by opening maps and limiting disruptions from apps and notifications. So this can happen when you connect to your car's Bluetooth device. Um, so you can see when it's connected or disconnected. We would have to come in here and select the Bluetooth device. Ooh, that's a lot of Bluetooth devices right there. Um, we'll go ahead and swipe back and see what other modes are available. We've got an exercise mode set. Turn on when you start exercising to stay focused on your workout. So I can hit start and I can say during exercise and then I have to set up Samsung Health in order to set this up properly. Or I can say when an app is open. So we'll swipe back and see what other modes and routines we can have. We're gonna have a relax mode. Turn on when you need a break. Relax mode minimizes distractions and helps you focus on relaxing. So we can make this based off a of place when I get to a destination, or we can select a time period. If, it, if I wanna relax, you know, sunrise until sunset, or a specific time each day or week. And then we have work. So work's not set, but we can stay focused on work by setting the phone to only ring with certain people um, based off that place that I'm at. So if I go to the physical office, then when I'm there, it won't ring based off the location that I'm currently at, or I can set a time period. And those are the modes and routines. Another cool option here is you can add your own custom mode into the phone. You just select the icon and you name it and select the color. And then you can actually come in here and decide uh, you know, what happens, whether you want to turn on do not disturb, restrict app usage, which settings change, whether you want the wallpaper to adapt. So whether you want to select a custom mode or whether you want to create a custom mode or whether you want to select a pre-selected mode that was generated for you. A ton of options are already here um, for modes and routines. The next feature I want to talk about in the settings is the wallpaper and style. You can come in here and update your wallpaper um, just by tapping on it and changing it to a different one. You can also change the way it looks. And this is amazing because there are ton of customization options here. So you can select the different styles that they have. You can change the color of the wallpaper, the clock here. Um, you can change the font. And this looks like a totally different wallpaper than what I just started with. Um, and I can see what that looks like in the different styles. So you can come into your wallpaper settings and modify that, hit done. Um, we can tap on it again and modify what happens in the lower left, whether we want to change to a different app. We can change this to the flashlight. We can change the camera to the calculator. And just like that, uh, it's you know, been modified. We can add some contact information here. I can enter text. Uh, we can say sample text and then hit done. Uh, but if you want people to you know, know your phone number or be able to call you, 
So now this looks like a completely different home screen than what I originally started with. I've got some text at the very bottom. I've changed the icons at the very bottom. I've changed the font, the color. Um, and now when I hit done and lock the screen, we'll see all those changes. Um, so I'll go ahead and double tap and wake the phone up. And now I've got the sample text at the bottom. Now this button turns on the flashlight. Now the flashlight turns on when I swipe to the left. And then if I want the calculator, I swipe this way. So the home screen has been totally customized and I can come in here I can change the wallpapers. They have tons of options for wallpapers here. So I can see what other featured wallpapers they've got. Um, I can scroll down. I like this one right here. We can set the lock screen and home screen. And then hit done. And that's what that wallpaper looks like. So you can come in here, uh, change the different lock screen wallpapers in the home screen ones if they have matching ones. We've got the photos that will be in my gallery. If I have any photos or videos on my own phone, I can select that and put that as my wallpaper. And they've got some graphical uh, wallpapers here that I can change. Let's see, let's go back. Um, I like this one. And we can select that for the home screen and lock screen. So now when we go home, it looks like this. And then when we lock the device and double tap to wake it up, it looks like this. So that's a preview there of the wallpapers. And we can swipe back and see um, what other options here, the color palette, and then dim wallpaper when dark mode is on. So those are your options for your wallpaper and style. You can come in here and modify how your Samsung Galaxy S23 looks and make it you know, your own, whether you wanna add your own personal uh, photo that you took as your wallpaper or select one of the, pre the pre-selected um, or pre-installed wallpapers that came with the phone, you can do that. And of course you can modify um, the, the time, the colors, um, everything here on the lock screen to make it truly your own lock screen. So it looks awesome when you, when you change the fonts and change the colors and you make it look uh, to match your wallpaper and your current setup. So that's a quick preview there of the, um, the, the new wallpaper options inside your Galaxy S23. So this has been a complete beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy S23 series. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a comment below. Feel free to give us a super thanks to help out the AppFind channel. We really appreciate your support and we can't wait to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications to figure out when we're releasing our next video. Thanks for watching.